now want to check in with CBS 17's Michael Highland. As you can see, he is there live with our governor. Michael. Yeah, we're here to talk to Governor Roy Cooper about what's going on with the response to Hurricane Florence. And thank you so much, Governor, for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, I want to ask you first, what are your most immediate concerns? It looks like we're already seeing some significant flooding at the coast. I'm concerned about the safety of North Carolinians. There are some people who chose to ignore evacuation orders and to ride this thing out. Uh, we hope that they're safe. We want them to hunker down wherever they are. I'm glad that we had uh, probably three quarters to a million people did obey the evacuation orders and they've come west and gone north. And I'm surely grateful to the people of North Carolina, the families and friends who took people in. A lot of them are in hotels. Many of them are in our shelters. Uh, we're thinking about those people. Many of them are wondering uh, whether they're going to have homes to go back to. We know this is a significant event for our state. With the storm surge and the flooding that we're expecting, this is going to be a long storm, and we've all got to hunker down, get through it, and then get about doing the recovery. We're looking at communities measuring rainfall in feet, not inches. Are there past storms you could compare this to so people have any indication what to expect? You know, we've seen our share of hurricanes and nor'easters and storms in North Carolina, but this is going to be a tough one. We don't know how bad it's going to be yet, but the predictions are significant rain combined with storm surge is not only, only going to affect the coast, but the inland counties as well, because the storm surge meets the river and there's nowhere for the water to go and it goes over the banks and you combine that with the significant rain we're going to have we know that the flooding is going to be brutal and what we're telling people too we know people are going to be without power we know people uh, particularly when the wind dies down that they're going to want to go and see their possessions see their property do not drive through standing water or moving water this is when a lot of people get killed uh, fresh water flooding kills people and so we want not to lose North Carolina lives to this storm. It's going to be hard enough recovering with our property and our possessions. We don't want to lose people so we're asking people to stay inside, stay sheltered. You signed an additional disaster declaration today. Are we getting the help we need from the federal government or are you looking for them to do more? They're helping us right now with the help that we need with supplies and personnel and equipment. We're getting help from states all over the country. I've talked to governors in other states. They have sent swift water rescue teams and medical personnel to help us, and we're grateful for that. But we also know that this is going to be a long-term recovery. We're going to have a lot of property damages, a lot of property damage, people's homes and businesses. So we're going to be asking for significant help from the federal government as we go forward because we know that recovery is a, a long and difficult process. We're going to have a lot of roads and bridges and businesses and homes to rebuild after this is over. So we're certainly getting the resources that we need right now to keep people safe and to for our short-term effort. But the long-term recovery, we certainly have to start planning now. Even though this storm has just begun and it's going to be around for several days, uh, we're certainly going to need that help and we certainly expect to get it. Even while the hurricane literally sits off our coast, the headlines in D.C. are about political fighting over the response to Hurricane Maria a year ago. Can people in North Carolina be confident that you and everyone else in power can put politics aside and we get the help that we need here? Now is the time we have to come together, put all of that aside, and make sure that we work for the good of North Carolinians. I believe that we can do that. Yes, we're going to have differences on other issues, but when it comes to disasters facing all North Carolinians, it's time for us to step up and get the job done. And I believe that we can. Uh, I've been working with all kinds of public officials uh, during the last few weeks to try and make sure that North Carolina is ready for this. I believe that we are, and we will get through this. North Carolina, North Carolina is, is a resilient state. We have determined people, and it's going to acquire 
persistence, it's going to require common sense, it's going to require hard work, and it's going to require patience. But we need to, to work together to get there. As you had mentioned earlier, upwards of a million people in North Carolina alone left their homes. People in South Carolina left their homes. A lot of people are going to want to go back home probably around the same time. Is there work you're doing now to make sure people aren't literally stuck in gridlock traffic just trying to get home when this is over? Well, I worry about their safety when they're trying to get home too soon because there'll be a lot of roads closed, there'll be a lot of flooding. So we're going to work to keep people away while it's unsafe. But the highway patrol, the North Carolina transportation workers, uh, volunteers who are helping us will try to do this in an orderly way, and I believe that we can. Governor, thank you so much for your time. And the governor is going to be giving us another update tomorrow morning. We'll bring that to you live when that happens. Marius and Angela, send it back to you.